When you live in a big city, sometimes street photography can feel a bit like shooting fish in a barrel. It's sort of everywhere there's stuff going on and stuff comes out of nowhere and presents itself as a great photo. But if you're somewhere like here, then it can get a lot more difficult a lot more quickly than you might think. And I know that I've experienced coming from London to staying here for a little while, there's not a lot going on. As someone that thrives on the bustle of the city and shooting protests and demonstrations, it kind of put me off for a bit. As you probably know, I'm kind of addicted to taking photos. And so after a, a period of reflection and a lot of learning, I think I've kind of figured out how to still do that even when you're in the middle of nowhere. Obviously this won't work if you are literally in the middle of nowhere and you don't have transport, but if you have access to a small town, there are some things that you can do that will make your life easier than just walking around the two blocks that are the high street of the tiny little town you're in. I hear a lot of people say things like, where I live isn't interesting, or I have to go to Tokyo or London to take great photos. Sure, maybe you live in the most boring place in the entire world, but for those of you who aren't in Slough, you're right. Even if you think that you are in the most boring town on the planet, there will be people on the planet who don't think it's as boring as you do. And so there are a couple of little tricks and, and techniques that I've sort of figured out to adjust my approach to street photography, places like here versus High Street Kensington. My first discovery and consequently the first tip I found really uncomfortable, hence why I'm really uncomfortable right now but it's also to demonstrate you should try using a long focal length. It doesn't have to be super long, you don't have to shoot 400 millimeter, but try shooting the longest length you've got. I only brought minimal kit with me here to New Zealand, so I'm using a 28 to 70, just locked out to 70. If you've got a 135 or a 100 mil prime, try that out. Using a longer focal length in small towns is kind of a pretty big advantage. If you watch my last video, you'll know that I pretty much only ever shoot with a 28 when I'm shooting street in London. That's because I like to get really close to people, be very fast and energetic and move around a lot. People are a lot more receptive to strangers coming near them in small towns, and so you need to adapt to people being a little bit more standoffish and probably noticing you faster than you might think. And so using a longer focal length helps with that a lot. It also helps that because you're not going to be as close, you get a little bit more compression with your background and it can make things a little bit more interesting. I found myself widening the aperture a lot more than I typically would when I shoot with a longer lens. I usually shoot at f8 or f11 just to get as much in focus as possible, but because you're not really going to get that anyway with a you know a 70, 80, 100 millimeter lens, you may as well play around with bokeh and see what you can find. My second tip, which I'm not currently demonstrating, is try shooting at night. For whatever reason, shooting in small towns somehow gets less intimidating when it's dark and the only people out are drunk old men. I don't know what it is, but Shooting at night in small towns, for me at least, seems to be a little bit more successful. Potentially because in small towns there's not really any tourists or people out during the day usually. I guess at night most of the working people of the town are not at work and some of them are going to the shops or the pub. The hours generally between sort of 6 and 10pm are the hours that I would shoot for. No pun intended. I know it can be a little bit sketchy in some small towns going out at night on your own, especially if you're female or if you're five foot seven like me. That being said, take a friend if you don't feel safe. Don't get stabbed on my account, yeah? Oh, and here's a bonus tip. Every single small town, even if it's only occupied by one person, will probably have two things. They have a petrol station and some sort of religious building. If you're in the west, it's probably a church. Put the sinner still down, that's not what I'm talking about. If you're in a really proper rural small town, if you've only got those two things to work with, then you've got one morning a week where you know there'll be a busy parking lot where people are coming out of church, and you know that the busiest place in town might be the petrol station. Now, sure, people pumping petrol into their cars may be a little bit boring. However, if you can get a bit creative with it, try the longer focal lengths, maybe you're shooting at night, maybe you can shoot center still. In New Zealand especially, a lot of people in small towns or that pass through small towns are car enthusiasts. It's often the case, the more rural you go, the more likely you are to see a skyline. 
somehow. If you can find a way to sort of utilize the hot points on the town's heat map, it can be really useful. In big cities, you can put yourself anywhere and it'll be busy enough to get a photo every now and then. But in small towns, pare down your locations. Instead of walking in circles around the two blocks, why not put yourself on one of the corners where you know that there will be people at least once an hour. And then once an hour you can take a bad photo rather than walking around for three hours and taking no bad photos. Okay, my final tip isn't necessarily street photography per se. However, if you're into street photography, you've probably heard of Alex So, and he's kind of the master of shooting small towns. Alex So does do a lot of walkies, and he does do a lot of sort of serendipitously found pictures, but he shoots on a view camera. So he can't really take pictures in the same way that I take pictures where I jump around in crowds. And so his approach is often to, I mean, often it's not the small town he's living in, he'll be traveling, but his approach is often to travel through a little small town. Maybe he'll find people through internet forums or Reddit or Facebook, or he'll just go and knock on doors. What he's looking for is not necessarily that sort of serendipitous, potentially comical or political street photo that a lot of us look for. He's looking for interesting stories that he can unravel like a detective. I think if you're in a small town, there's gonna be a lot fewer people and a lot fewer events and a lot fewer things going on in the town, but you have an advantage in that a lot of the people are gonna be more interesting people. Going on the internet for a start and trying to find people who might be interested in letting you into their home and sharing something interesting that they do, or if you're really brave, door knocking on interesting properties, finding you know, old boat sheds and finding out who owns them. I mean, it's not street photography in the purest sense that we like to think of it in, but it's still art photography and it can be really rewarding. Rather than relying on chance, which you can do in big cities because it's a numbers game, proactively seeking out really interesting scenes and people by directly going to businesses, you know, small businesses. Maybe there's a, you know, a local farmer who has a crop dusting plane that could be interesting. Maybe there's somebody in your town who, you know, runs an old mechanics shop. If you shoot film, you'll be right into that. Try finding some people in your small town that you can work with to build up a, you know, not necessarily a body of work, but maybe you can work with them and in their household to try and get five, six, seven pictures that are really interesting that tell sort of, you know, a small story. If you can tell a small story about a very particular person in a very particular location, A, it's gonna really build your confidence when it comes to street photography, and it's gonna build your creative juice machine. You've got that creative constraint of you have to take a picture of, you know, this leather restorer, and you need to figure out how to make it interesting in a street photography-esque kind of way. I hope that that's helped you get a little bit inspired and maybe consider not needing to travel to do some street photography even if you can't call it street photography all the time. And I hope it's proved to you that if you've got a camera, it doesn't really matter where you are, even if you're in the middle of complete ass fuck nowhere, like I am right now, you can still take great pictures. You just have to be a little bit more creative about it and you know, people bang on about prime lenses being great because of the creative constraint. No one bangs on about being stuck in the middle of rural New Zealand with a goat and an alpaca to take pictures of as a creative constraint. I'll leave you with some pictures that I've shot in small towns and in more rural scenes and although I don't think it's work that I'm going to put in an art gallery at any time in the near future, it definitely kept me going and stopped me from getting really rusty and fed up and not taking any photos for longer than a few days, which I think might actually kill me at this point. Subscribe if you enjoyed that. I hit 21, I think, now. So, you know, kind of a big deal. Stay hydrated and create art.